Banjirana, a qualified nurse who deserted the nursing profession to join farming. On her farm, Florence integrates crop farming, poultry and piggery farming, which was our focus last week. This week, Florence takes us through the challenges of poultry keeping, especially when you choose to invest in layers. But from persistence and hard work, you sooner or later rip from your sweat. I began with two local chickens, which gave birth and multiplied to 80. Sold them off, and when I sold them off at once, I picked the morale to do better. I bought 500 broilers. I brought them here. They grew up, but market for broilers are basically for meat. The market was low. I made some kind of losses. Then I got advice from another farmer to rare layers. Then now I ventured in layers. I brought 1,000. They did well. Now I changed the supplier. I went to another supplier. All the 700 I bought almost died. Because he was a bit cheaper. My original supplier was a bit expensive. Eh? Was selling one day old chicken, 4,500. Then the other one was selling at 3,200. It's a company. When I brought them, they didn't work out. They all died. The few remaining ones, I sold them. I changed to another company, which was also a bit cheap. They also did do what I expected from them. But the first supplier, chicken had done. Then I went back to that. my first supplier, where I get them. The requirements important to consider before starting up a layers farm include the structure this should be comfortable enough and should have conducive environment for the laying hen enough capital to buy feeds dewormers and vaccines on a regular basis good and safe lighting system preferably electrical well-trained labor they should know the basics in feeding healthcare and egg production, a good brood supplier, chicks should grow at the expected growth rate and a level of disease resistance, a trusted feed supplier and a constant water source. Once all this is well considered, death rates are easy to control and fewer losses may be encountered. Usually we do the brooding ourselves here. I have in two boys. Every, every batch I bring, I train them to brood. Eh? Every batch I bring, I put in a new person in the brooder so that most of them should learn. In case the old ones go, the new ones can do the work. And I, we usually work hand in hand, like when it's brooding time. I'm here at 7, I leave at 7 in the evening. Even the whole night, I keep on calling. Is there a fire? Are they fine? Any problem? Up to like a month. Eh? When it's a month, they've stabilized and they are all fine. Uh, from the brooder, we change them to a normal house at two months. These big houses. Then we do the mixing of feeds ourselves right from the brooder. We mix feeds ourselves. We do the vaccination. I do it myself from, from here, plus two other boys. I train one or two to give injections, to give vaccines. And I've always trained them on how to know that a bird is sick. When do you know that? So when they are entering into the house with food, I tell them, see how many chicks will remain behind. When others are rushing for food, find out how many are not coming. Then you tell me. So usually when they tell me today we put food, but as if they were not interested at the time of putting food, then I know there is a problem. Then I've also taught them to know the droppings. When there is any abnormality, I teach them the droppings that show that there is a disease in. 
some most of them have mustard and they usually report. Then for these ones which lay eggs, usually the production tells us if there is a problem or not. Because at least I've, that time I've monitored, issues of safety are not here. When it comes to feeding in poultry, it is advisable that a farmer mixes the feeds by themselves. This helps to know the right quantities and quality of feed given to the bird at every stage. The feeds mixed should be rich in vitamins, calcium, protein, carbohydrates, minerals and all given a lot of water. Starting from the brooder, for me on this farm, I don't, I don't use these feeds, the pellets and what. They are a bit expensive and not accessible. What I use, I buy fish. I buy crushed cotton seed, sunflower, maize bran, broken maize, and premix. Then we mix according to age. Each age has its own ratio. Like in the brooder, those young ones, we mix them their own ratio. Out of the brooder, we put them on layer. Grower, grower's mash, it has its own ratio. Then the layers also on its own ratio. Like that. Uh, we get our feeds from, I buy my feeds from Masaka. We transport once in big quantities. It takes like a month or half a month. Then maize bran, I acquire it locally around here. This place they grow a lot of maize, so maize brand is readily available at any time. When you are a big commercial poultry farmer like Florence, feeding over 4,000 birds may not come as easy. For the least, a farmer may need to spend between 200,000 to 400,000 shillings daily on feeding alone. These are for feeds you may need to make a proper mixture for the birds. Maize bran, fish, cotton seed, primax and sunflower. <laughs>